Fellow Guyanese, ladies and gentlemen, good snowy afternoon. It is my distinct privilege to welcome you all at another event which seeks to showcase Guyana through its culture, its food, as well as its diaspora loyalty, energy, and resourcefulness. Hi there, welcome to my YouTube channel. Carl Brown here with you, and it's time for me to take you into my time tunnel. Yes, hi, welcome back and going down my time tunnel. I'm looking this time at a few events that took place here in the United Kingdom. One was the Federation of Guyanese Nationals. They usually have their Christmas Bazaar every first Sunday of the month at the Guyana High Commission. I attended that one briefly, it was really good. But then there's another one that took place and that was by the Guyana Speaks contingent. They, they got together and had the second bazaar and this was really interesting too. Tell me more about that. Um, oh, in the meantime, wherever you are, I'm going to just chill out and have myself ooh, a glass of wine. I need a bit of that. I need some, they call it a winter warmer. And now uh, we'll get into things. The Guyana Speaks, they um, brought about this bazaar, which is really, really beautiful. Um, that bazaar began, first of all, um, with the and they were actually raising fund of, um, to assist the people of the Wakapau area um, to get them an outboard engine, the indigenous peoples of Guyana. And as we get into that, the bazaar opened with the introduction by His Excellency Mr. Hamley Case, High Commissioner for Guyana. Fellow Guyanese, ladies and gentlemen, good snowy afternoon. It is my distinct privilege to welcome you all at another event which seeks to showcase Guyana through its culture, its food, as well as its diaspora loyalty, energy, and resourcefulness. As you all know, this event is proudly hosted by Guyana Speaks, an initiative of a few who, although they had immigrated to a distant land, for further development, we're still very interested in the development of the people and communities they have left behind. Rob and Juanita Westmas stand out as two of those who are committed to Guyana's improvement and development. It would be remiss of me if I did not compliment Guyana Speaks for the organized talks on topics such as Guyanese cricket legends Georgetown's architecture and history, Indian arrival, the West African connection, and what will oil do for Guyana. I wish on behalf of the government of Guyana, and on my own behalf, to congratulate Guyana Speaks for their laudable efforts in organizing such a robust 2017 program. I have no doubt that 2018 will be just as thought-provoking. I know that Guyanese in the diaspora are very well informed with developments back home, sometimes not always accurately. And I know that they are therefore aware of the recent developments regarding the workers in the sugar industry. So I would like just to take the opportunity to briefly address this issue. These developments should not be surprising since the price for sugar on the world market has experienced a dramatic decline over the years. Our factories, despite modernization, continue to operate at a loss. The industry's inability to produce the quantities necessary to compete with the decline in these prices has led to the current and urgent need to seek for diversification and to embrace the concept in action and practice rather than merely in political rhetoric. What many may not be aware of and should be noted and lauded is that the Guyana Sugar Corporation has extracted over $30 billion from the government 
over the last two years as we seek to keep the industry alive. As perhaps you know, countries like Trinidad and Tobago, Jamaica and Barbados have long since shut down or miniaturized their sugar industries. It is therefore clearly not the intent of this government to leave sugar workers without a source of income and the ability to provide for their families. It is still our hope and intention to find alternative employment as well as to encourage and assist to diversify in this sector. Despite these challenges, our country continues to grow and 2018 will be no different. Good governance continues to characterize the management of the economy, especially in the financial sector, as well as in the nascent oil and gas sector. There have been continued and sustained efforts to further develop Guyana and to enhance the lives of our people. Emphasis has been placed on the strengthening of the economy and improvement of infrastructure throughout the industry, throughout the country. While these are not the only necessities for the development of a thriving society, they continue, sorry, they contribute to the country's overall stability and security. As an example, close to home for diaspora people, the Chedi Jagan International Airport, as some of you may know, is being extended right at this moment with a modern aircraft construction on the way. This means that by the middle of next year, our Tumeri Airport will be able to accommodate larger transatlantic aircraft. For those of you who don't know, this type of white bodied aircraft, like the A300 or Airbus, is favored by both Virgin Atlantic and British Airways. The problem is that though these aircraft can land at the CGI airport, they can't take off as the runway is too short. This is being dealt with at the moment. One end of the aircraft of the runway has been complete and the other end, the final end will be complete by the third month of next year. After that, the larger body of the aircraft will be able to land and take off from Guyana. Your High Commissioner has set himself a New Year resolution, which is more like a task to convince at least one of the transatlantic carriers, British Airways or Virgin Atlantic, to come to Guyana at least once a week after the runway extension is complete. My cousin, the Air Commodore David Case, has been helping me and advising me in this respect. And the future looks bright for our tourism sector, which is largely affected by airlift. Guyana is on the path to greater development, not only in the oil and gas sector, but more comprehensively in the growth of the economy overall. In this international economic environment, we have managed to do with the economy what so many other countries have been unable to do in and outside of the hemisphere. Friends, with that being said, let me therefore take this opportunity to extend gratitude to you, our diaspora, for the continued support and contributions to the development of Guyana. Your efforts are recognized and we look forward for your continued support in the coming years. I am quite certain that the President, when he comes next year for the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in April, will echo the same sentiments when he addresses you all. Today's event, today's event aims to raise funds for the purchase of a five horsepower Yamaha outboard motor for the children of Wak Wakapua, Wakapua, Wakapua Road. Wakapua? in the Pomeroy. Children in the outlying regions are in urgent need of a motorized boat so that they can get to and from school. We are seeking to raise 1,200 pounds, merely 1,200 pounds to this effort. 
So I'm kindly asking for you to give generously, also to join the raffle, the silent auction, and participate in the various events and competitions. Let me take this opportunity to extend best wishes to all of you for the coming season, and may 2018 bring you all the success, love, and peace that you wish. As my Jamaican friends love to say, one love. Thank you very much. I just want to say also, we have Gusta, um, which is the Guyana UK Social Development Association, would like to make um, a presentation to His Excellency. So, Oren, perhaps if you could come up, please. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. Thanks to Guyana Speaks for this opportunity. Um, good afternoon, Guyanese friends, well wishes. The Ghana UK Social Development Association, as many of you would know, has been the organization that hosts, I would say, the largest events uh, for the Ghanaian community here in the UK. And in so doing, we do raise quite a bit of funds, which we donate to worthy causes in Ghana. We have only recently given quite a substantial sum to the National Psychiatric Hospital in, in Bobis and to the Joshua Children's Center. Um, we're keen to ensure that we are reaching out across uh, Diana to all communities as far as it's possible. And with the support of our volunteers, our supporters, the close-knit family that we call Gusda, we've been able to again uh, raise a bit of money. And this time it's to the First Lady's program of empowerment and this is in the, in the area of women's empowerment we know only too well the work that she has been doing we recognize she has been steadfast in her approach to the uh, women's empowerment issues there are various initiatives including the success in business i think it's, it's called self-reliance and success in business uh, and, and she's moved on to getting the train of trainers and so what we find happening is that quite a lot of women across the country are being empowered. And we know that true empowerment, that's the true way in which people can be free. And her focus on economic empowerment is one which we'd like to, to support. So it's on behalf of the Ghana UK Social Development Association, we'd like to donate the sum of 2,000 pounds to the First Ladies and her team, because it's, it's a combined effort um, for whatever initiatives they've got in the area of women's empowerment, particularly young women, uh, because I think we all know only too well the challenges that women face in Guyana. And hopefully that this small con contribution could go somewhere to alleviating and, and overcoming some of those challenges. So I Commissioner, on behalf of Gazda, check for 2,000 pounds. On behalf of our First Lady and the Government of Guyana, I'd like to thank you and Gusta for this very generous offer. I will make sure it gets to the First Lady very quickly and before Christmas. Thank you very much. And then I stepped aside and decided to look at some of the stores that were available. And there's this first one I went to was done by a beautiful lady. Her name is Jennifer. And Jennifer was doing something called seasonings when I said call season because she called it the four seasons uh, the four seasons the, the Jay's four seasonings right. is based on my name partly and also on the four seasons of the year and also the fact that in each of the four seasoning types there are four herbs in there Yes. So it's a mixture of herbs and spices. So the ginger comes out top, onion, garlic, the, the sort of seasonings we use at home. And on top of that, you've got the extra special little that only Jennifer knows what goes in there. But they're very distinct. Um, summer is very popular. It's very hot. So I think that's why it's very popular with us. Um, on the other hand, spring is very much a milder, more aromatic herb and seasoning. 
uh, Winter, when I created Winter, I thought, you know something, this would be just right for Christmas and for those who care to do so, add a little bit of alcohol to, to bring out the clove and the cinnamon and the nutmeg. So basically there are four types there of seasoning four, here, there which is types. summer, autumn, winter yes, and spring. Yes. And Today we only had the three and winter and spring got sold out. Jennifer's all purpose for spices and seasonings. And, and what about for, for vegetarian as well? Oh yeah! Yes, for vegetarians, vegetarians and meat eaters. But I always tell people, um, taste a little bit first to see which one suits you best. Great. Um, can and then I moved across to Arlene Sampson and Arlene was doing these products, very various products um, that was done by aloe vera. And I'll have her tell you more about that. I was very impressed with that. Hi, my name is Arlene Sampson, and these are all aloe vera products. We know aloe vera, we come from the West Indies, we know about aloe vera. It's been around for centuries. So they're all forever living products, which are mostly aloe vera. Um, so our products are aloe vera first, and then other products are added. Um, we can be generous with our aloe because we grow 75% of the world aloe. So that is huge, isn't it? So um, other, other companies buy aloe from us. So the aloe is grown in the Dominican Republic and also in Arizona. So these are all forever living products. So we do weight management, we do um, stuff for, you know, for the whole body inside and out because aloe, we know aloe is a medicine plant, it's also a silent healer. So it works inside, it's an adaptogen, it adapts to whatever is going on and helps to heal the problem. How can they contact you? How can people reach you if they want to? Okay, you can reach me, um, as I said, my name is Arlene Sampson. You can reach me via email at arlenesampson at hotmail.com or you can get um, on my website which is www.arlene.myforever.bizstrokestore. Thank you. I must say the atmosphere was really buzzing. There was so much of um, stalls and everyone trying to do something good for Guyana and, and to bring about awareness um, and raising funds for the indigenous people. There, of course, there's the arts and crafts section. And then I met this guy, Don, Don Charles. Don Charles was um, he's a producer and he was doing some clothing from Tanzania. Okay, I'm Don Charles and I'm um, the chief executive of a small independent record label. I'm working with a young lady, she's 23 years old, she's in Tanzania. Her name is Chikaya D. We're going to la launch her debut album in January, she's coming to the UK for that. She's also a designer, she, she's taught herself how to make clothes, so she makes all this stuff. And um, here we have a selection of women dresses, um, some skirts, um, some men's shirts, uh, and a variety of other stuff. Um, but basically what she does, she's taught herself how to make, make clothes, and she, she makes them all in Tanzania in her little house, and ships them over here to me, and, and I get rid of them. So the top you have on is also from Tanzania? Yes, yeah, from Tanzania, and it was made by her. Oh, yes. and, and, and trousers. Even coconut water was there, it was really interesting. I'll tell you more about that. Um, so I'm Shoka from um, Shoka's Coconut House. And uh, what we do here is we have um, fresh coconut water like you have it back home. So the same original coconut water. So it's all freshly chopped. And then you can drink straight from the coconut. One like the ones in the shops and stuff. This is the real deal. Once you have it, you have a machete, you chop it up. And then you drink straight from it. Which is also beneficial for you as well. Great. Um, is it 
coconut that's come from Ghana or is it just some? Uh, these ones we get from South America, so South from Costa Rica. Okay. So it's a fresh one, similar to one to Guyanese or Ghana or any, any other place. Okay, great. Same story. So no fresh. And then there was Genie's oil, and this is pro um, products made from coconut, coconut oil um, products. It is really interesting to see that there. Yeah. Hello. Hey. My name's Chris from Genie's Oil. We bring in naturally coconut oil from the Caribbean. The Genie stands for genuine natural ingredients. So we take the coconut oil and we infuse it and make an all natural ingredient for your body, your skin, health, and well being. We have here, so you can get the taste from the Caribbean. We have a lot of oils coming in around the world, and that is from the Caribbean. So join us and support us, our products, naturally. You can find us at genie.co.uk. Then a presentation was done by Gazda, um, by Mr. Oren Alexander. In addition to which, um, we are quite keen and we know that the community is very interested in the preservation of their language, the Lokono language. And in recognition of this, I think we, we would like to think that some form of encouragement to be given by an award to probably the best student of that language within that community. And so we pledge to give an annual donation of 200 pounds to the best graduating student of the Lokono language. So on behalf of the Guyana UK Social Development Association, a presentation check for that amount to be written in. Thank you so much. <laughs> 200 pounds is the pledge. Thank you, sir. And of course, as I said, any shortfall in the funds raised towards the outboard engine will Thank you, sir. step in. Thank you. Thanks a lot for all of you who support the Gaza activities. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, Juanita Westmus sums it all up for you. Hi, so my name is Juanita Cox Westmus. Um, I'm a member of the Guyana Speaks team. Um, the team is made up of four of us. So my husband, Rod Westmus, um, Tafawa and Tun, who's, who owns the Classic, where we hold our events, and also Ray Hendricks. Um, so today's event basically is called the Border Bazaar and Fundraiser. It's very different from our usual Guyana Speaks program, which normally takes the form of a panel of three, um, and they speak on a particular topic. So that normally happens at the on the last Sunday of every month. Mm -hmm. So it could be anything from poetry to topics like what will oil do for Guyana. But Rod and I happen to live in Guyana from 2013 to 2015. And during that period, we became very close to people who lived in the Pomeroon and in Wakapau. And we've kept in touch with them since we came back. And it came to our attention that actually the children in Wakapau, who live in the outlying areas of Wakapau, haven't been able to actually get to school. Um, a reason being that their outboard motor broke down and isn't fixable. So basically they either have to get to school in Coriales, and you can imagine trying to paddle how long it takes. So we decided we were then going to do a fundraiser to help them buy um, a Yamaha upboard motor that's about four, four to five horsepower. Um, so basically today's event takes the form of store holders and we've got a raffle, we've got silent auction, we had Keith Wade playing music, we had Cetel Gropasad, all of the hot shots. Um, so we've tried to mix it up with a few different things um, to get people interested. And the main idea of the storeholders was that they would be people from Guyana or people selling Guyanese products. Um, and also we tried to recreate a little bit of the border bazaar atmosphere. So we've got a man called Shopper who's selling coconuts, water coconuts. Um, and we've got uh, food in the restaurant area, everything from black puddings and chana, um, even conky, which like in England we don't normally get conky. So um, things like that. And then food-wise, we've got um, drink-wise, we've got things like sorrel, um, morbi. Uh, oh, and Rod made some pone. So yeah, a nice mix of things just to make us feel back home. That I can't end without mentioning two fantastic people who are based in Guyana, Karinya Sharples 
and also Francis Michael Bailey. Francis Michael Bailey, as many Guyanese will know, is a documentary filmmaker and we contacted him about two weeks ago to ask him if he could help us create a border market atmosphere. So he actually went to Border Market, recorded all the things that were going on in the market, and yes. sent us a, an 11 minute piece. We also have got from Corinna some of the masqueraders, because you can't really have Christmas without the masquerade. Yes. So again, she did a 15 minute piece for us. So that's how we've managed to get a really nice mix of people. So. Actually, this is Christmas of Bazaar. We call it Christmas Bazaar. Yes. Now, can we look forward to having another bazaar sometime in the new year? Um, so it'll be just not Christmas alone, because it actually is really bringing Guyanese together and you can see the atmosphere is really one of vibrancy everybody's like happy to be around and can we just look forward to having something like this happening on a yearly basis it's not just once at Christmas right so basically because Guyana speaks is only one year one years old we were trialing it to see how it worked if we could get enough people interested and so we've now got quite a solid following we generally get about 50 people a month and then we thought we would do this bazaar, and if it worked, and if we also managed to raise the money we liked, we would carry on doing new projects. So we're now looking at a new project, which is helping people in Wakapau preserve the Lakono language. So the next time we do a fundraiser, we'll be to help towards that project. Um, so we'll definitely be doing another one again. Um, but also we found that because whenever we do Guyana Speaks, we find some topics um, catch the attention of people more than others. So for example, when we had what would oil do for, for Guyana, um, we found that a lot of people were actually interested in taking that further. So we're now looking at perhaps doing a one-off symposium where we have a dialogue with Guyana, either with the university. We're in talks at the moment, so I'm not sure what's going to happen, but we're in talks and we're going to try and build a stronger link between the Guyanese diaspora here and people actually living on the ground in Guyana. Um, you know, we want to be very careful that we're not kind of getting an idea of Guyana. We live so far away now, so we have to, we can't sort of enforce our ideas. So we have to have that kind of dialogue with them. So that's really the main thing for us, is making sure that we're hearing the voice of Guyanese people who live in Guyana here. Um, so the other thing we're looking at as well is in March, we're hoping actually to premiere a new film um, about Walter Rodney's life in, um, at the British Film Institute. So we're sort of branching out and doing lots of different things. Um, we'll always keep the basic format, so we'll always have um, a program on the last Sunday of every month that will always be there um, with three different people. But the idea is that we'll do other one-off events. So other one-off bazaars, other one-off symposiums. Even we're thinking that, you know, if we get really interesting people in terms of, um, so people like, um, I don't know, some of Guyana's great pioneers. If we can get one person who will do a presentation for us, an hour-long presentation, we'll hold like kind of more conference. So yeah, we're diversifying. So actually, we, we can say that 2018 looks great and even better for Guyana Speaks. I certainly hope so. Um, we're going to formalize the organization. At the moment, it started off as an initiative. Um, we're going to try and establish it now as a not-for-profit organization so that we can um, you know, all of us are really volunteers and we love volunteering um, and we know that people can't always afford to pay money to come to events like this. So we're trying to keep, stick to the £5 entry fee, things like that um, and maybe get more people to help us volunteering in all sorts of different ways, but yeah. We need a success for 2018 and kind um, Guyana Speaks lives. Fantastic, thank you so much. All in all, it was a fantastic evening. Great work done by the Guyana Speaks team and look forward to being with you again in the new year. Carl Brown saying it was fantastic and let's keep together. Big thanks to everyone who subscribed to the channel and who's subscribing to the channel and I look forward to be doing more for you in 2018. So once again, cheers to you and all the best for the new year.